Happy Arbor Day, folks, and welcome back to the Bearded Architect Designs channel. I'm Alex, and today I'm building another addition to my vendor workspace. Today I'm building a pop-up display rack for my wall art that I make. Here's an example of what those look like. So they're pretty narrow, or pretty thin, and they got about a foot of height. About, I mean, they also vary. I have some of them that are two foot to four foot. This one's three feet. But yeah, I just want to make a display rack for holding multiple of those guys. <clears throat> the display rack I want it to be collapsible and fit into my car, which is a pretty small car. It's an HRV, so it doesn't really fit a lot of things in the back. I want it to fit in my car, but also I want it to be lightweight, but yet sturdy. I want it to also function as a display rack, but also look pretty cool because it is, after all, another showcase of my art. So, you know, why not make it look nice? All right, enough dilly dally. Let's get to it. Materials you will need are four two by four by eight foot sticks of lumber. You'll need roughly a yard or three feet of craft chain. They sell these in seven yards, so it's plenty for multiple of them if you're trying to make multiple. You'll need some large gate hinges. So these ones are three inches, but they're not gonna exceed over the two by four on the top. Plenty of screws making sure that they're longer than one and a half inches. So two inches is fine. And so I just have some walnut that I'm gonna use as a little latch here. And also for the latch and pin as well, you'll need at least five to six inches of dowel. I'm using a three eighths inch dowel. You can use any size, but three eighths is really easy to work with. Some of the tools you'll be needing are at least one drill with a Bit to match your screws. I also have a drill bit as well and a tape measure. Also you'll need some kind of crosscut saw. I'm using my miter saw. You can use your uh, circular saw or hand saw. You'll also need a table saw because you're going to be doing a lot of ripping today on the table saw. I, it's my favorite tool in the shop and it's one of the ones I use the most as well. You can use a sander to get all these little identification codes on the 2x4 off, just to kind of give it that more cleaner look. See, it'll eventually get it out. And a jigsaw to cut out the latch. Uh, if you have a bandsaw, great, that'll work too. So this step is optional to sand out the identification codes on the 2x4s. Just, I'm just doing it because I really want this to be a very clean look. If they're not bothering you, you can go ahead and just leave them. If you don't have a sander, also you can go ahead and leave it. The, if I was going to do this the right way with the right tools, I would definitely use a planer or a joiner to get those identification codes off and make the wood look really nice. But alas, I do not have a planer or a joiner. Just the one of the many, many downfalls of being a, a starting woodworker. So you got to find those workarounds some way, somehow. A free way to help me get that planer uh, would be for you to hit that subscribe button. So after you're done getting those identification codes all sanded off, you can start cutting your lumber to length. So you'll cut two of your eight foot lengths to five feet, and then the rest of them you'll cut at one foot nine inches, making sure that it won't exceed over two feet in width. With your five foot sticks of lumber, we're going to rip those down the middle. For this cut, I can have the guard on. Also make sure you always have your push stick on hand. After you're done cutting, make sure you know which piece goes with which. That way you give the illusion of the two pieces looking like they separate from the hinge. And I think it looks pretty cool when you see those grain patterns just kind of separate and come back together and it's the same grain, like the same piece of wood. So now I'm finishing up cutting my one foot nine sticks. You'll want to either cut six of them or 10 of them just for structural integrity of the display rack. The more you add, the more rows you can add of things. But if you have bigger art, maybe less is more. Also, you can use the first stick you cut at one foot nine, nine inches as your stencil instead of having to measure it out every single time. Make sure you use the same stick though so you get consistent lengths. Once you get everything cut, it's ready to assemble. Make sure you know which piece goes with which. So I just kind of separated them basically because they'll separate at different hinges, but will be different rack 
ends, or one will be the front, one will be the back. I laid out each of the one foot by nine inch pieces every nine inches. That way I have enough space for to display my art. I also had a bit of an issue when I, when it came to screws. I was running out, so I decided to use this method to save on screws. Basically, each one foot nine inch piece has three screws in it, attaching it to the five foot pieces. So I just had every opposite piece had two screws, and then the next one had one, and then two, and then one. That way each piece has three fastening into it, so it's got a fixed point, but also enough screws to kind of hold it in place without it rotating by a single screw. Once all your screws are in, you can pick it up and see what it looks like in the folded position and lay it flat so we can get those hinges started. For the hinges, I decided to clamp everything down and everything fitted in place, which took a minute because everything was just kind of not wanting to be in the same place. I think it must be from me not working on the totally flat surface, but I was able to get everything working and in place before I decided to start putting in screws for the hinges. For hinge installation, I would hold the hinge in place and stencil out the holes and then drill out the holes and then add your screws when the hinge is on. After you get your hinges on and it's all in good folding position, it's the best time to kind of get everything sanded just for a once over. That way everything will look clean and flush and you won't have any sharp edges. So the stand started rocking a little bit and I realized I needed to cut angled footings to get that right. So I kind of just eyeballed it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you wanted to do this the right way, you would just have like a little flat like stop block that you would use to measure out flat on the ground. And I'm cutting with my circular saw. So you get to kind of see that in action. It's basically the same thing as a miter saw, just kind of free-handed kind of deal here. You just kind of have to eyeball those cuts to get them straight across with the little pencil mark. So I do that on one side, then flipped it over, did it on the other side. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to make some of these hooks. Right now I'm taking off the guard because we're gonna be doing some rabbit cuts on these planks of wood on both sides. So here is the drawing, or here's the profile of what I'll be cutting out for these kind of, I don't know, like display hooks. They're not really gonna be hooks, they're gonna be more of holders. So I'm gonna, all that shading, all the stuff I'm shading out is gonna be cut out and not used, and I'm keeping the rest that is lighter. So I'll show you how I do that. Basically, you wanna make sure that the height is below the top of it so you don't cut it all the way through because we're doing cuts that are only gonna be going through a certain percentage of the wood and not the whole piece. So you can see I'm only cutting through about say 80% of the wood and leaving that 20% on there just because I wanna keep that piece still attached for when I cut it on the miter saw. So now I'm doing the same thing but running it across the other way to get that piece mostly out. I don't cut them all the way through just because that it I'm, I'm a little afraid that it might slip and fall in I might fall into the saw but uh, it comes in handy when you're trying to run that saw up against the fence and you have something actually there to hold it. Now I'm putting the guard back on because I'm cutting all the way through down the middle on each of the pieces. So that way I have two sets of or two runners of the pieces that I need. That way I just have more hooks to put on my display rack. So I'm cutting in half as you can see here. Cutting multiple pieces in half just in case I need a lot more. So once you have most of your pieces cut all the way through, making sure that they're not all the way cut through like that basically kind of ensures that you'll have something to press up against the fence because you want to press this piece up against the fence because you don't want it flying at you when you're cutting it on the chop saw. So I marked it at two inches, cut it, and now I have my little hook. And then when you get down to your last pieces, it doesn't really matter with that last piece that you didn't cut way through because you really can't cut it off without getting your finger in some precarious place on the chop saw. So it really, there really is no need to cut all the way through unless you really want to. But for me, I'd rather be safe than efficient. So once you got 16 to 20 of them, just 20 just for extras, just to in case you mess up any of them, then you're ready to start installing them. I install mine through the back, that way it looks a little bit more cleaner from the front when with your art being displayed. I just basically just 
drive a pilot hole into the piece while holding the piece flush against the bottom of the 2x4 and then kind of run the screw in all the way through the 2x4 and into the little hook piece and screw it in until it's tight and do that 16 times and you got yourself a two-sided display rack that looks pretty nice so far. So now I'm measuring the footprint of the display stand just because I want it to be under two foot six inches just because I'm limited to 10 foot by 10 foot space in my farmer's market vendor spot and I'm doing that because I am cutting some chain to keep the display rack from sliding outwards. This chain is going to be that preventative measure. Basically I just measure out 16 inches of chain and cut it with the tin snips but you can if you have pliers you can just kind of unhook that chain and kind of get it to the size you want it. I'm just using tin snips to cut each link that I need to be cut at 16 inches. So now I have two pieces of chain at 16 inches and to install those I just kind of back out some of the screws that are holding the 2x4s in and install them into that screw. You might have to twist and get it through the threading but for the most part this is pretty you know just pull pull some parts out put some new pieces in kind of deal. And I do this for both sides and just to kind of show you how it works, basically you pull it out as far as it goes and there's chain will pull and have some tension and keep it from sliding any further. And then I just I'd have a little slack in it just because I want to keep it at two foot six inches as my footprint. So now I'm going to get started on the latch. Basically it's a piece of walnut that I'm going to drill some holes in, some three eighths inch holes because remember our dowel is three eighths inch and uh, basically just drilling the holes first just because it's going to be really hard to cut once the shape is not square. Best way to do this is probably on a drill press but for time and demonstration on tools you actually might own I opted to just use a drill. Also a preventative measure for blowout and tear out on both sides is uh, just using a piece of tape to kind of hold all the grain together. And then I'm just cutting out the shape with my jigsaw. Preferably, I would have rather used a bandsaw, but I don't have a bandsaw just because they're really expensive. And a bandsaw you get, allows you to kind of maneuver a smaller piece around the, the blade rather than having to control the blade around the piece. But this is a, this basically, you know, you got you to figure out how to some way to do it just because, you know, just because you don't have the tool, the right tool to do it doesn't mean you can't do it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can get that bandsaw. So with a little help from the Dremel and getting everything sanded, I made this look a lot nicer and kind of clean up those edges so they're not as harsh and sharp and splintery. And remember we got those 3 8 dowels, you want to cut those to two and a half inches or two inches depending on how far you want to stick those in the wood. And I just use some tight bond dark wood glue basically because the walnut is a pretty dark wood to start and you know it kind of will conceal the glue and kind of make it a little bit less noticeable because the lighter glue is definitely like very noticeable. So basically I'm just kind of getting spreading that around making sure it connects to the dowel pretty tightly and gets all in those crevices. And basically that's kind of how the latch and pin mechanism will work. So the latch will hook onto the pin that I'll be installing onto two sides of the display rack. So basically I'm just kind of eyeballing where that hook pin is going to latch onto. And then I also need to draw out where that latch anchor is going to be set. I use a center punch to center the hole that I need to and then use an eighth inch bit to kind of create a pilot hole and then I run my three eighths drill bit through there all the way through. All the way through for the latch side but not all the way through for the pin side because you want the pin to be anchored and seated in there pretty well with glue. But the latch side can be just friction fitted. Basically it could be removed if needed and also pulled out, pushed in a little further if you needed to. But the pin itself, the one I'm installing right now, needs to be glued in and hammered in and held in just kind of in place because it doesn't need to freely swing at all like the latch side does. So now we'll get to my futile attempt to make the whole piece itself lighter. Basically I got an inch and a half hole saw bit and kind of ripped some wood out and then did it 
that on both sides, ran some lines across, and then cut it with a jigsaw to hog out an almost oval-like shape in the top rung of the wood. This was very tedious and very time-consuming and also very, very loud. So being considerate of my neighbors, I decided to only do this for the top rung on both sides and kind of called it a day just because we probably need the weight on the bottom to be pretty heavy. So I only did it on the top just to lighten the load a little bit. There we have it. It's a pop-up vendor display stand, uh, display rack for you know, wall art. You could probably even put long boards on there. You could put really any kind of flat piece of art on here if you wanted to have them stacked up vertically. So here's just one example of the art that I, or pieces of art that I make, and I can just put three more in the bottom and then four more on the back side as well. So you can, it's a real big showcase of how much you can display in vertical space. Yeah, a uh, fairly quick build. It took me about two days to build it. Most of the, the work is gonna be doing that inlay, trying to get rid of all that wood um, just to get it a little bit lighter. It is a little bit heavier than I thought it would be, um, but it's pretty sturdy and very heavy and won't be blown over in a windstorm, so that's good. But yeah, if you, if you like what you saw here or built along, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'm Alex and this is Bearded Architect Designs and I'll see you on the next build.